Good evening. I will now describe the Rock, Paper, Scissors mini game and its features, showing setup and certain considerations within its functionality. So, fundamentally, the Rock, Paper, Scissors mini game is a folder added to the content folder of whatever your project is. Everything is within it. The main code is within a UI asset itself, and there's one test blueprint. Um, that you can use to trigger the game temporarily but the main way of using this system is by initiating the UI I will get into details of that in a moment so um, within the Unreal Launcher the folder would be added to the content folder of your project um, and that's it, it doesn't have any other dependencies other than within itself uh, in the UI so within your project itself you would have the rock paper scissors mini game. Of course, it's an asset folder, blueprints with some enums, and the UI itself. The main functionality of the mini game is within the UI, the designer, the animation, and of course uh, all the code functions and variables involved. Um, I will now add the uh, trigger blueprint to the scene. This is for testing purposes only. On the right you would see a variable factor here where you can set the amount of rounds to win. It's at a 3 by default here. Timer duration, 5 seconds uh, to choose. And of course the difficulty between easy, medium, and hard. Okay, so first one is a draw. Whichever between the player and the opponent gets to three wins first, as said, uh, will be victorious. Um, I've won this round, and of course it counts up to the middle um, on the side here. You can set however many rounds to win as you like, um, from of course one to a hundred, is your call. But basically, um, this is it. It's at uh, easy difficulty. So um, your chances to win is not uh, too ridiculous. And of course, the higher the difficulty, the AI cheats, just warning you in advance. So um, the mini game is extremely simple. It's UI based. Um, you make your choice. You have uh, however many rounds you set. And of course, upon victory, you get the notification you want. You close the UI, and that's it. It returns the value that you have um, won the game, which can be used with your own code as you see fit. The rock, paper, scissors um, game has a feature where you can play animations or basically you can have whatever visually happening on the screen in between rounds. I will demonstrate that now. Um, it relies on this boolean to be set to false but once it is true when you do play the game um, on a second time, after every round, the game will then be minimized. Um, and then, of course, you'd have to select the Continue button to continue playing the minigame. Um, this is useful for if you want a player reaction or NPC to do something in between rounds. It's like whether they win or lose to have an emotional reaction or whichever. Um, it basically gets the minigame temporarily out of the way um, to see the reaction and of course the game will only be continued um, once you click the button and you move on to the next round. So fundamentally this is rock paper scissors as uh, we all know it, it's not complicated um, you make your choice, you have however many seconds to make your choice. If you don't make any choices whatsoever, it will default to rock. And um, surprisingly, you can get far with just that. So, fairly simple, fairly straightforward, and of course, um, UI based, so it's not dependent on anything. You will only have to run the initiate function um, to call the UI, the rock, paper, scissors. Uh, UI initiate here. 
um, which you can then feed it the difficulty you desire, the rounds to win, and the timer uh, duration. Uh, this is the example um, blueprint uh, with the code leading to the actual initiate itself where you would set the difficulty rounds to win and the timer uh, to make your choice. Um, these are the main two nodes that are important to create the UI widget with the rock, paper, scissors UI and to initiate the minigame itself and of course the settings. So this can be called from anywhere. The create UI um, gives a return value of a reference to the UI um, itself so you can call whatever functions within it. So you don't need casting or anything else. Uh, this is all you need. Um, it's very versatile for that reason. Being UI based, you can simply um, call it anywhere in your game, whatever game it is, um, and you would uh, have the mini game to work with. Um, one other note to consider is, let's see here, is the disable inputs. So basically, um, when you're moving, uh, I guess the character controller and you would stop your character from moving while playing the mini game and of course there is a resume uh, input function in the um, the example blueprint but um, you know uh, sorry in the UI itself there's a resume um, inputs uh, already built in so once the game is complete it should uh, re-enable uh, inputs um, this can be uh, adjusted after the fact um, as you choose um, here's a re-enable input and of course it removes the UI from uh, parent so the use case for this mini game fundamentally is um, it's UI based and can be initiated from anywhere so um, that speaks for itself it's extremely versatile um, you can call it whenever you want and it's UI so once the UI is visible you play the mini game the UI is uh, removed uh, from parent and it's gone. Um, so it's just a nice addition, a fun little mini game you can add to uh, your game just to spice things up. Rock, paper, scissors, uh, well-known uh, game in itself. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, the code doesn't really need um, much updating or fiddling, but it's fairly straightforward. Things are commented and uh, laid out in different functions where you can go in and uh, play with things as you desire. But as mentioned previously, this play animations between rounds, you would set it to false by default. Um, and this would um, not have any pauses between rounds. Uh, we go straight from round to round. But this is where in the resume uh, show minigame function, you would add any triggers for animations for your characters or whatever else where you would want something to happen in between rounds. So um, in one of my personal projects, I had um, used it to trigger a um, winning celebratory animation reaction from the player and of course a loss or a loss animation if you lose the round itself. So just demonstrating it set to false and we'll go from one round immediately into the other, back to the countdown timer, and that's pretty much it.